Earlier this year, Celine Dion released a documentary about her experience with stiff person syndrome. It came two years after announcing her diagnosis to the world. The condition is a rare autoimmune neurological disease that causes muscle stiffness and painful spasms, among other symptoms. Though it was first described in the 1950s, we still don't have a complete picture of SPS or what causes it. These mysteries are partly why other people with SPS were so excited for the singer to showcase this disorder in her documentary. That's a light to shine on a very rare disorder that, you know, if there's 7,500 of us in the world, like, who cares? And I get it, you know, like from a medical system standpoint, I could even see not caring. But when somebody that is, you know, an international treasure comes in, to the picture, it's a time it shines a light. And as a very rare disease, there you just can't oversell how amazing that is. That's Dr. Ilea Khan, a board-certified psychiatrist and one of the few people living with stiff person syndrome. While SPS most often develops in adults, Khan felt the pain early in her childhood. She remembers it starting in her neck, a symptom her mom had noticed as well. She noticed always that I was stretching my neck and rolling my shoulders. When they did a screening at school like they used to do, and I hope they still do, grade school scoliosis nurse, you know, asked you to touch your toes. And, and I was diagnosed with scoliosis and saw a chiropractor because, again, my parents were the kind of parents you could talk to this stuff about even as a kid. They took me seriously, and I will be forever grateful for that. And at 10, this chiropractor took me seriously and he told me things like, this isn't normal. And so, you know, best thing you can do is sleep on your back as much as possible. It was this advice, along with the exercises he gave her, that Khan believes has saved her life. Though she spends about 20 hours in bed each day, Khan continues to run through her stretches, a feat many other patients are unable to accomplish. Unfortunately, the scoliosis diagnosis didn't take away her pain. The body aches only worsened as Khan got older and enrolled in medical school. She tried anything to numb the pain. There were many days you could find Khan and her roommate running around New York City in search of spas. In New York, thank God, you can go to a place where like two women will stand on top of you, which is, you know, which I always, I need for my personal muscle rigidity, I need a, you know, a steamroll or something that can break up steel cables or cement because that's how hard the muscles feel. Khan continued to explain away her pain by blaming it on long hours of bending over textbooks, but she no longer had a good excuse when she went off to residency. The people around her started to question just how okay she was when she started pulling away from social activities. Khan hadn't thought to go to a neurologist yet and was being diagnosed with other conditions in the meantime. When her migraine diagnosis couldn't explain her other symptoms, they'd move on to a new one that would make more sense, but was never quite right. All of a sudden, my symptoms are like leaking out from that bucket of the thing we just diagnosed. And that's why, you know, they call SPS a diagnosis of exclusion, because you have to, to find out that you have it, you have to disprove all other possible diagnoses that could be close, mimic it, or look something like it. So it's a lot of pressure on the patient to get all those diagnostics. Which include blood tests, lumbar punctures, MRIs, and nerve stimulation tests. It's not fun, especially because usually at that point, the patient is not treated properly or not treated at all. And so we're jumping around. We look like demonic possession and we can't stay in the wheelchair. We're sliding down. And from the psychiatric point of view, like absolutely, that could look like a bona fide person that is having some sort of psychosomatic or psychotic or et cetera problem. But it isn't at all. We're pathoming. But if you tell that to somebody who hasn't seen what that's like for both the bicep and the tricep to spasm at the same time. I mean, that's a unique feature. We have agonists and antagonists, things at the same time, which is why we can lie in bed and with a stressor like a fever, which makes muscles more rigid in everybody. But to us, that can break a long bone because, you know, like the humerus while you're just laying in bed. Unfortunately, none of her doctors had suspected Khan's extreme pain was due to stiff person syndrome. Regardless, Khan continued to do what she does best and push forward with life. She accepted a fellowship position at Yale Medical School after finishing her residency, 
a decision that would eventually lead her to the correct diagnosis. It was there that a co-fellow encouraged her to finally see a neurologist. I was just in tremendous amounts of pain. It was still traps. It was still neck. I had always managed with massage, chiropractic, and then finally, you know, it wasn't working anymore. And so that's the year that I first, you know, saw a neurologist. So I still see this doctor and he was the first one that said, it sounds like stiff person syndrome. But again, just like when she was diagnosed with scoliosis as a young girl, knowing her condition didn't relieve her pain. There's no cure for stiff person syndrome. Instead, treatment is focused on minimizing the symptoms using sedatives, muscle relaxants, and procedures similar to dialysis. While Khan has dabbled in a few, including plasma replacement therapy, she's consistently been getting Botox injections throughout the years. From the back of my head all the way down, my lumbar and my foot arches and etc. for paralysis, which helps you don't feel the pain if you have a paralyzed muscle. Muscle spasms aren't the only symptoms these patients have to deal with. Khan says that since the muscles are pulling in all directions, many people with SPS have skeletal issues. Additionally, many patients have low levels of GABA, a neurotransmitter that slows down brain activity and reduces stress. And so we don't have breaks on our nerves, which account for sometimes our speech, some people or their quick mind, you know, the racing thoughts they describe it as, which is, you know, as a psychiatrist, I'm like bipolar because it's like mania. But no, you know, racing thoughts can happen from anxiety, from anything. And I think that it can just happen from fast nerve impulses. And now I realize I wasn't a worried child because I was only worried, you know, and soul or whatever they would call it, you know, but I was worried because I was going too fast. Today, Khan and her friend Leia create videos around SPS awareness on their YouTube channel, Heart to Heart. They've also partnered with the Johns Hopkins Stiff Person Syndrome Center as patient advocates. One consideration Khan pushes for is that every patient with chronic pain should have a psychiatrist because physical discomfort almost always leads to mental anguish. This disease does foster, you know, if you read and list the symptoms, agoraphobia, that's like panic to leave. And I have it <laughs> and I think my way through it. I'm like, you reach that doorknob and you do it because I know it's irrational. And so I make myself do it, but it's not easy. So a lot of this disease is about we freak ourselves out because the initial irrationality or, you know, emotional stuff. It comes from a place deep, deep in our subconscious because it's the nervous system that's reacting. You know, it's not us. It's not who we want to be, but it is in the core. Along with increasing awareness, the YouTube channel has helped build a community for people living with SPS, regardless if they're able to make it out of their homes. We talk about just stuff, you know, whatever we have in common, like fear of the hospital system or going to get a, you know, medical attention because of re-traumatizing or trying to look sicker than you are because people don't believe you're as sick as you are because this disease is invisible. Like a lot of pain conditions are. They see us walking funny. We have canes. But other than that, we could look pretty normal. Though there's still a lot to be learned about stiff person syndrome, we do know that the disease and its symptoms exist on a spectrum. You can find more information about SPS, Dr. Ilea Khan, and all of our guests on our website, RadioHealthJournal.org. For more behind the scenes, follow Radio Health Journal on Facebook, Instagram, and X. Our writer-producer is Kristen Farah. Our production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Greg Johnson. <laughs>